Okay, it's half past three, so time to start. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar. My name is Noemi Romilly, and I am the event manager of SBG Systems. Today, we are hosting a marine webinar entitled uh, Real-Time INS or Post-Processing. What is the best solution for your survey? Uh, so let me now introduce you our speakers. Uh, today, we will have the pleasure to hear and to learn from Thibaut Bonnevy, CEO and co-founder of SBG Systems, Ludovic Bazin, our technical support manager, and Raphael Siriani, chief software architect and co-founder of SBG Systems. Uh, let's now have a look at the agenda. So first of all, Thibaut will make a quick overview of the company and of our line of INS. Uh, then Ludovic will present the result of an hydrographic test conducted in Hamburg. And then we will have the time to answer some of your questions right after. And uh, we will complete this webinar with a live demonstration of our INS GNSS post-processing software Kinertia uh, that will be followed by a second Q&A session. Uh, one last thing before we begin, uh, if you have any questions uh, during the presentation, uh, please don't hesitate to type them into the question box. As I've just said, uh, we will have some time during the, this webinar uh, dedicated to questions. Um, so let's now start this webinar and I will turn over to Thibaut Bonnevy for an introduction of the company and of our products. Thank you, Naomi. Welcome, everyone. Um, so I'm going to, to give you a brief overview of, uh, of the company and our uh, product for uh, hydrography before uh, letting our expert uh, detail a lot more how we can uh, ease your, uh, your workflow. Um, a few quick words on SBG. I think uh, many of you already know the company, um, so I will be short on that. SBG Systems um, has been established now 13 years ago, specializing in inertial navigation solutions um, for three main markets, uh, the biggest one being survey, um, a big part of, of our market and unmanned vehicle as well, um, and the last part on aerospace and defense. The company is headquartered in France. Um, I think that's pretty obvious with our accents anyway, um, with subsidiaries in the US and in Singapore to serve our uh, global worldwide uh, customers. Um, we've got a strong experience in, in the field uh, with more than 25,000 sensors now um, um, in various uh, applications and, and customer locations. If we look a bit at our solution for radiographers, we divide them in, uh, in four. Um, main scenarios. So all our, our all-in-one sensors, which are more dedicated for um, integrators and space constraint application, our solutions, uh, and mostly NAFSAID that I will detail shortly, our post-processing software with Kinersha, um, and a set of services to help you uh, start being trained and get the last update on, uh, on our products and get really the, the most out of them. So two main kind of systems, uh, our all-in-one sensors and our solutions for, for surveyors. Um, on the all-in-one sensors, you, you will find everything from the ellipse to, uh, to the apogees. Um, those are more designed for unmanned surface vehicles, uh, buoys, or different applications where the space is extremely constrained. Um, however, on regular vessels, we, you will mostly see our nav side solution with three different grades of accuracies where the processing box is separated from the IMU. So that helps you to mount the IMU close to the sonar head uh, or in a, in a de dedicated room and have your processing unit uh, either rugged or racked mounted um, on your control room. How do we separate them? It really depends on the market and on the um, um, on the kind of survey you are going to, to perform. Um, the ellipse is mostly used for single beam and, uh, and echo sounders, uh, sorry, on single beam echo sounders and side scans. Um, it gives you uh, the accuracy you need for that in an extremely miniature uh, product and, and very cost effective one. Um, however, NAVSight exists in three different grades with Equinox, Apogee, and Horizon, which are really more designed for multi beam survey. Um, and the choice being them 
is based usually on two criteria, the accuracy, so the depth you're going to survey um, in, and also um, the conditions. The more challenging will be the condition for the GPS signals, um, the more we are going to go to higher end products if we want to survey in real time. Uh, let's say you're surveying under large bridges, um, you will need something more accurate. Um, and we'll go more into details and to, uh, and to uh, results and that we fill a little bit presentation right after. Uh, so that's what we uh, offer on the hardware side. That's completed with powerful software um, that we call Kinersha, which allow you um, a full post-processing of all your data um, and that's been developed full in-house with keeping in mind really the ease of use and uh, how to make your survey um, much easier and also give you more control on what you're doing. So that's what Rafael is going to, to present at the end. Um, last but not least, we, we have developed a full line of service that we call the SBG Plus services. Um, that's based on two main um, kind of services, the one around the equipments um, to, to secure your investment and the one around the competencies to, to give you remote uh, training or quick start on-site trainings. Um, and also we can be on your side for different kind of intervention days. Um, I, I think I've been um, focusing a bit on, on that on different uh, slides before, but really what we keep in mind on everything we're developing for hydrography is how do we make um, your job much easier than what you used to be in the past. So that comes from modern GUI uh, to uh, new features to help you uh, calibrate your level arm, get some controls on your data in real time and in post-processing. So that's really what we keep in mind when we're um, upgrading and designing our solutions. Um, those systems, we know you're going to operate them extensively, uh, sometimes uh, seven days a week and some jobs, many hours a day. So um, we try to make it as reliable as possible. So that comes first with maintenance, um, where we are providing free firmware upgrades uh, on the full um, product life cycle. Um, that's something we provide for all our hardwares. Um, the, the calibration um, with the MEM sensors is extremely stable. So uh, we do a lot of in-house calibration in order to help you not having to deal with that. Um, and we have some check procedures uh, in real time. So uh, you make sure all the time that your system is uh, operating well. Technical support is also key for us. So that's why we have three locations for that, California, Paris, France, and Singapore. So we cover 24 hours a day of technical support with uh, experts in, uh, in the graphic area. Um, and all our sensors are um, export free, which means uh, we're going to ease and speed your logistic if you're going to operate in different locations. Um, many of you already uh, experienced our product. So I just want to give you a quick overview of uh, what we're releasing um, this, uh, this month. Um, two main things, a new um, major firmware for uh, our um, product lines and uh, a new version of Kinosha. So on the firmware side, um, we, uh, we have redesigned a lot of things, uh, starting from the data logger, uh, which is a lot more powerful and easy to use. Uh, you can uh, customize a lot of things to, uh, to make your um, recordings uh, easier to, uh, to recover. Uh, we have some new antenna configurations uh, to make it easier again with some uh, pretty fine files and also uh, some level arms that you can uh, adjust uh, easily. We have new outputs and we have uh, some uh, in and sieve uh, for a very shallow water. Um, Kinosha, however, we have uh, released a few new um, key features. The first and main one being the third parties uh, support for GNSS and IMUs. Um, that's key. Many of you has feedback that they are using different kind of hardwares, uh, SBG, INS, but also some other hardwares. And now with only one post-processing software, you will be able to post-process all of them. So you won't have to buy many licenses from various vendors and you won't have to train your team on all those uh, softwares. Um, we've released also a new uh, version that uh, includes GNSS only processing. Um, if you have some, uh, some base stations or some uh, GPS only uh, survey sometimes. Um, and we're easing also the import of the SBG INS settings. We are improving the IMU uh, reference point and alignment. And we have improved also our exporter with new filters and tags. Um, Rafael is going to, to give you a, a very detailed tour of that, so uh, I won't take too much time here. Um, that's it really for the product introductions. Um, that's very short, but if you have any questions, um, 
feel free to ask them in the chat to ask them after we are really here to to help you on that thanks a lot okay thank you thibault uh, thanks for taking the time to make this quick overview for us today um so before before ludovic's presentation uh, it will be the time for us uh, for our first full question so Uh, so we are curious to know uh, how many of you guys uh, already use uh, post-processing. Uh, so the question is, uh, most of the time, how do you conduct your survey? Uh, in real time only? In real time plus post-processing if you have to? Or I always post-process uh, post my missions? Uh, the question is on the screen and I let you a few seconds to answer it. Okay, I just give a few more seconds. I can see that people are still voting. <laughs> okay. Okay, it seems like almost everybody has voted. Okay, so let's see the results. Okay, so it seems that uh, many of you uh, use post-processing. Okay, uh, Ludovic, what do you think uh, of these results? Yeah, hello everybody. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, we, we're gonna see into the study that um, post-processing sometimes is a, is a way to go. Um, I guess it depends probably on uh, the type of acquisition you're doing and area you're working. So, so let's have a look now to to some results. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for attending uh, this uh, presentation. Um, so we conducted last year in SBG uh, some uh, acquisition, uh, three days of acquisition in the uh, port of Hamburg in Germany with our partner, uh, McCartney Germany. And the purpose of this uh, acquisition um, was to, to, to perform, for, to go in different areas and look at um, our product and looked at uh, our various solution and what they can give into multi-beam uh, acquisition in various environments. So let me just present you the data set and acquisition uh, uh, method that we have used. Um, so we, I heard a small vessel on which we have installed a, a multi-beam echo sonder, so a resin CBAT 7125. And we have performed the acquisition using a, a Teledyne uh, software PDS2000 um, that has driver and is uh, fully compatible with our products. Um, plus, we installed four uh, SBG INS systems on board, so that's all the equipment or the, the various product line we can have. So we installed three NAFSITE package, uh, Equinox, Apogee, Horizon, plus also because we wanted to, to, to have a look on the uh, performance of uh, the uh, Ming Nature grade sensor that we are having, Ellipse, we, we installed also an Ellipse study onto the vessel. Um, so the studies compare the performance of all sensors towards one reference sensor uh, that we have chosen to be NAFSITE Horizon, that is a closed loop fog system, and we post-processed in tight coupling uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the raw data of the, the horizon to get the best performance. And we, we, we have compared for each sensor, um, uh, we have compared it to this reference. Um, so the hydrographic data that uh, we, we are going to present have been post-processed using Beamworks from AutoCleans and we have post-processed all the INS data using our post-processing software, Cleanersia. Um, then we have published um, all the results onto our website. So the full study is available onto the website. There is a test, uh, a test report uh, a page, and you can have a look on the test condition, but also the, re the results depending on, on where we have been doing acquisition. So I I'm gonna come back later on uh, onto this, this page to, to present you uh, some detailed uh, results there. So let's have a look now at the first uh, data set. So the first data set was uh, in Hamburg Docks. It's an open sky area. 
um, where we have we have been doing acquisition. So if we look at the, um, the real-time um, data themselves and we compare it to the to the reference system that is a post-processed one, uh, we can see that in terms of motion, uh, the acquisition um, showed that um, when we compare the data, that uh, all the data are providing suitable and pretty good uh, uh, accuracy. So uh, looking at um, Equinox and Apogee, uh, you can see that uh, the results are below 0 0.03 degrees for motion. And if we look at the ellipse um, that is originally not designed for, for this kind of acquisition, you can still see that we have pretty good results there, uh, having the sensor around 0 0.05 degree um, when we compare it. Um, if we look now at the heading, um, that's about the same. Almost all the sensors are providing pretty good stable data the ellipse um, might be just at the edge, but it's full into its specification. And um, depending on, on area you will be doing acquisition, the sensor can provide uh, a decent data set. So if we look now uh, at to the position performance, uh, we can see that all the sensors um, are providing very good um, accuracy. So below five centimeters of accuracy and most of the time it's between one to two centimeters. Uh, the main reason for that is that all the sensors are embedding uh, GNSS uh, RTK survey grade receiver board inside and we add um, real-time correction so we manage to, to, to have a very good uh, accuracy uh, during the acquisition. Um, so there was no real challenge by the way because um, the uh, the, the reception was, was good. Um, so let's have a look now uh, onto the bathymetry uh, uh, data themselves. So if we go back onto the website, we have published for each data set uh, some, uh, some bathymetric data, but also um, standard deviation. So showing uh, the performance you can expect for the bathymetry um, for each sensor. Um, we have also published a map uh, with the survey confirmance. So th this is a repeatability when you're when you are doing uh, when you're doing acquisition, you are doing several paths, and you have overlaps in between the data. So it's how your data are being repeated for each pass. So you can compare for each sensor uh, the quality of the bathymetry itself, um, standard deviation, again the confirmance, but also. Um, we are comparing it to, to the reference map um, that we have uh, chosen that has been um, uh, that, that has been processed using uh, uh, NAFSITE uh, data. Um, so if, if you look at the real-time data for, for the three sensors, uh, Ellipse, Equinox, and Apogee, um, they are providing pretty good, um, uh, pretty good results um, with maybe for the Ellipse um, a, a, a bit of noise due to the, um, due, due to the um, to the heading mainly. So let's go back to the overall performance uh, for all the sensor into this area. So if we look at each sensor uh, and we, we, we go a bit through some statistics, um, we can see that all the sensors are providing suitable and pretty good data in real time and that no post-processing is really needed. Um, if, if we look at the, the position, everything is below 10 centimeters, which is a uh, uh, very accurate, uh, for, uh, accurate enough for, for survey. And um, if we look also at the heading and uh, motion, um, you, you're going to reach some some high level of, uh, of performance. Into such areas, there is no challenge in terms of GNSS reception. So all sensors will be able to provide a, a good RTK uh, RTK accuracy, uh, which is good for 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 the acquisition and that. It, it doesn't request any post-processing after that. Uh, if we look at the motion, um, even if the ellipse is, uh, is fully and probably better than, than the, uh, in terms of performance and its specification, it can be just at the end um, for, for such acquisition. Um, probably you're gonna have some good results uh, using, uh, on multi-beam acquisition um, in very shallow area and with low motion. So in terms of package, um, a valuable package that we will be recommended on our side for those uh, open sky and, and shallow survey will be the Equinox and it doesn't require post-processing. So let's move now to the next area. 
which is a survey um, a survey under a bridge at Bruken. So let's have a look at the results. So one of the challenge into such area, it's uh, GNSS outages. Um, the bridge were quite big, quite large, and we, we, we had uh, GNSS outages from 45 to 60 seconds. Um, plus, um, as you can see, uh, looking at the small dots here, uh, some noisy GNSS data. So it, in such condition, um, INS sensor are mandatory. So we'll be focusing only on Equinox and Apogee uh, onto, onto the presentation, onto this presentation, uh, mainly because Ellipse is, um, is, is not able, is not capable to, to, to provide good enough data set into such area because it hasn't been designed for that. So let's have a look um, at the motion and um, heading data. And if we look at the comparison towards um, the reference system, um, you can see that motion is, is very still very accurate and um, stable. Uh, you can see a slight difference in between the Apogee and the Equinox, which is normal. This is linked to the sensor grade. Um, and if we look also at the heading, the heading is, um, is, is pretty good and pretty stable um, during the acquisition. Uh, slightly, again, better for the Apogee, uh, which is normal as it has higher grade uh, gyroscopes inside. So, Looking at this area, the motion and heading is not itself the proper challenge um, because it, it's being maintained even in real time uh, using gy the gyroscopes. If we look now uh, at the position and we look at the comparison uh, to, to the reference system that I, I just to keep in mind is a post-processed one, um, you can start seeing some significant drift uh, that are going above two meters for the Equinox and even for the Apogee sometimes up to 0.8 meters, almost a meter. Um, that makes data in terms of 2D position not really usable for final data. That's, uh, um, I mean, you, you, you're you going to have some impact and going to see some glitches onto the bathymetry if you use directly the, the data like that. If we look at the height now, um, you can see that the height in real time um, stay pretty stable. Um, this is thanks to, um, uh, to uh, an option that we are having into our sensor in, in real time. Uh, we have an enhanced RTK mode. Um, in fact, we are using the EVE to mitigate the drift whenever we are losing RTK corrections and stabilize uh, the height. So um, that, that, that's the reason why I still okay for this kind of uh, 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 in real time, sorry. Um, so if we look um, a, a bit more specifically at this area, so we can see that there are some long outages plus noisy position. Um, so the inertial solution allows to maintain um, a good solution or a much better solution in real time than uh, what a GNSS receiver only can do. Um, but still, um, there are some, uh, some, some small drifts and some small jumps. So post-processing uh, PPK is uh, the highly recommended solution to maintain a suitable uh, accuracy for survey. Um, so if we look now um, at the comparison uh, data after post-processing. So motion is still good, and even it's being improved by the post-processing. Um, mainly when you are doing uh, post-processing, you are, you are doing a forward and backward computation uh, that allows uh, reducing or increasing the accuracy of the, of the motion also. But where we're gonna see some significant difference, it's really when we are looking at the position comparison. So if we look at the um, uh, horizontal position now, uh, you can see that um, for both sensor, everything is below 15, 20 centimeters. And even if we look at the Apogee, uh, we are below uh, 10 centimeters all the time. Um, so that's um, a good um, uh, accuracy for, for, for survey on, uh, on to, to use data at the end. Um, if we look at the elevation, this is the same. Uh, the elevation is, uh, is pretty stable and below 10 centimeters. So uh, that is uh, in terms of, uh, it's, it's a RTK-like uh, height. So in terms of uh, um, height, um, it's fully into uh, IHO special order specification. So let's have a look now at the bathymetry data themselves uh, under the bridge. So this is the same uh, for, for this area you're gonna find for each sensor um, and each solution type, um, the impact that you're having onto the bathymetry. 
So if we have a look at the Equinox bathymetry in real time, uh, you can see some small glitches here and uh, some small holes. Um, those are um, mainly because uh, in real time uh, there was some uh, some uh, some drift and some um, quite important uh, uh, jumps into the position and that generate some some small holes and uh, not very repeatable data in real time. So if we look at the standard deviation, even in real time for an apogee, uh, you can start seeing that um, the accuracy for the bathymetry is not um, is not optimum. Um, and if we look at the confirmance also, you can see that the repeatability of the bathymetry is not perfect, especially on those bridge. Um, this is the same for the Equinox. Uh, you're going to see some uh, some some um, some poor repeatability. Uh, if we start looking at the post-process data, especially for the standard deviation, uh, it starts improving, but uh, still there are some area, depending on the sensor, that are not perfect. So if we look also at the bathymetry and we compare it to the difference, there are still some uh, some small uh, small holes. Um, if we look at the apogee uh, type type couple data, um, you're going to see that bathymetry st start to be very good and pretty repeatable. Um, and you are having a, a very nice map if we if we compare it to the reference. So if you look at the overall performance, um, so you're going to see that in real time motion for both sensor Equinox and Apogee probably provide a decent set and um, an, an accurate set of um, uh, of, date, of data. But as soon as we start looking at the position, uh, you're going to see that the um, um, horizontal position, but also the um, the, the height uh, is going to be really at the limit and not really usable for uh, for all the sensors, especially for the Equinox uh, in real time. That's not going to going to be perfect. If we look then at the post-process data, um, Apogee is uh, definitely um, uh, providing a very accurate set of data. Um, the Equinox um, is, is going to provide a decent set, but you're, you're still going to have some noise and you will be just at the edge for such survey. So uh, our recommendation for such area is really um, to, to do post-processing just to, to recover uh, some of the Genesis outages and, and really improve the position. And uh, on our side, we will be recommending uh, the Apogee and Kinesia to provide a, um, a, a very accurate set of, the, of data. So let's move now to the last to, to, to the last um, area. So um, that was a um, um, survey that we did in a reverse channel, Speicherstadt in the Hamburg River Channel. So um, this area was is a pretty tough one, uh, mainly because um, it's not fully um, um, Genesis outages, but it's Genesis multipass effect with small outage, and that is probably uh, worse to filter than. Um, than a pure Genesis outage where you can rely directly onto your uh, your inertial solution. So if, if we focus a little bit uh, at the Genesis solution into such area, you can see that there are some strong multipass effect on very very big jumps. I mean, those, those kind of um, Genesis information in real time are not uh, easy to, to handle and, and process. So if we look at the data comparison now to the reference system, once again, um, you're going to see that the motion, uh, pitch, and roll um, are stable and accurate, and um, doesn't really request any post-processing. But uh, if we start looking at uh, the heading itself, you're going to see that the heading is a bit more noisy now. Um, this is mainly due to GNSS, enfin, to GNSS uh, multipass effect. Um, the heading GNSS computation. Uh, being an RTK-like um, computation, uh, as soon as you've got a multipass, it's going to be impacted also by uh, such reception. And uh, you, you really need to have uh, some good gyroscopes at the back uh, to filter that and rely more onto your gyro itself. So if we look at the position, this is probably where you're going to have the worst results. Um, the position uh, for the Equinox uh, some of the um, uh, horizontal jumps are above five meter, above even 10 meter at some times, um, which makes the data not usable at all in real time. Um, and even for the apogee, uh, into some of the area, um, the, the, the horizontal jumps are above one, 1.5 meter. Um, that's 
makes data not really usable fully in real time. Um, the horizontal and vertical position are highly impacted by the GNSS um, uh, multipass effect, so real-time position are, are, are not really usable uh, in such area. So if we look now uh, at the post-processing data, so attitude is still uh, very good, and it's uh, uh, as uh, thanks to, to forward and backward processing, uh, you, you're going to reach the highest accuracy you can with post-processing. Uh, you can see also a good improvement onto the heading itself, uh, thanks to this um, to, to, to the post-processing. But where you, you, you're going to see some major differences, it's really on the position itself. So if you look at the comparison after post-processing, uh, you're going to see that um, uh, the apogee is now um, below 10 to 5 centimeters uh, on the horizontal position compared to the reference system. And even for the Equinox that was um, um, that has some very high drift and, and has some um, very bad impact onto the, the horizontal position. You can see now that uh, everything is below 50 centimeters, uh, which is pretty good. Um, same for the height. Uh, the height is significantly improved now. Um, still, uh, you're going to see some difference in between the apogee and the equinox. Uh, equinox is really at the edge for such uh, for, for such acquisition. Um, to be honest, into this area, uh, the main challenge and probably um, uh, the way to, to, to recover good position uh, uh, data set is really to perform tight coupling because uh, the tight coupling is very robust again, multipass effect. And uh, thanks to, to a full reprocessing of the raw GNSS data using the, the inertial data, uh, you are able to really filter all the, the, the multipass effect and have a, a very good uh, solution type at the end. Um, so that's um, a, a significant improvement. So let's have a look now onto the, the bathymetry data set uh, into this area. Um, so this is the same if we look at. Um, the equinox in real time, um, you, you're going to see some uh, some jumps into the bathymetry and a, a thumb area where we are having some uh, very uh, gaps on very bad data set. Um, standard deviation is not very good, and um, that's uh, the the conformance also um, pretty bad in some area. Um, but as soon as we go on a post-process um, on a post-process solution you're going to have some pretty good standard deviation and also good repeatability in terms of bathymetry um, and if 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 we compare it uh, to the reference system uh, this is very good so uh, the apogee is providing a, a very good data set as uh, the equinox on post-processing um, you, you're going to have a decent, um, a, 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 some decent results. Uh, still, you're going to have some some small glitches onto the bathymetry because um, it's. I mean, the, the the performance of this sensor is just at the edge for such area. Um, just for, for for the information, when we did the acquisition uh, into this area, um, the the partner with with whom we were doing the acquisition. Um, was used to 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 run some bathymetry into those uh, rivers, and for position, he never used any GNSS or uh, inertial solution. He was using some conventional method because he had a lot of issue uh, getting good reception into such area. So he was quite surprised seeing the results um, after post processing, and see what well, what it can give. So if if we have an, an, an overall look at the performance for this area. Once again, motion in real time and post-processing provides good data sets. The heading into such area is a challenge. Uh, so post-processing to gain accuracy into such, uh, into such environment is probably mandatory. Um, the main challenge is really the position uh, with some high uh, RMS difference, especially for the Equinox in real time. Uh, Apogee still provide in real time maybe some decent data set, but you still have some jumps from time to time. And one of the points is that you are, you know, in terms of position, below uh, 10 centimeters, uh, um, maybe 80% of the time, 85% of the time only. As soon as you post-process the data in such area, you're going to have a, a, a good, so some some really good improvement onto the, the position itself. Um, and both sensors uh, at the end are providing 
they send good results in PPK uh, into some into speci uh, IHO specification. Uh, but the performance of the IMU itself is really noticeable, uh, especially in real time. Um, so a recommendation for such area, the Apogee plus Kinersia is probably the optimum package in such conditions. So if we, if we have a look now um, at the overall study, um, and we look uh, at the various systems and depending on conditions, um, we try to summarize a little bit what, what will be our recommendation uh, depending on the, the survey type that you will be doing. So um, in open sky uh, and shadow water area, we will be recommending the Equinox and a, a real time uh, um, real time acquisition is, um, is perfectly good. Um, then as soon as you enter into a bridge or where you're gonna have some outages and uh, arch genesis environment, the recommendation will be uh, mainly the Apogee based and uh, for long outages and very arch environment uh, Kinersia post-processing is, is, is really the, um, a valuable package you, you're going to see uh, after that that uh, post-processing um, with Kinersia is not so long at the end and it can be pretty fast to have uh, to, to have a final data set uh, that is usable for, for your post-processing and you can export in various formats so um, that are that is compatible with most of the uh, processing software, most of the multi beam processing software today. Um, then, if we look at the ellipse, um, I, I know that some people are asking questions about the ellipse for for such a survey. Um, probably for very shallow area uh, in real time and in and in with flow motion, it, it's going to provide you some decent set of um, of data, but. Um, it's it's not designed uh, originally for surveys, so uh, it's going to be really at the edge uh, in some in some occasion. And if we look at the entire package, probably on our side, the Apogee is, uh, is the, the, the let's say universal package <laughs> that's going to work in any kind uh, of area. So just to finish, if you want to have a look um, at the full study and spend a bit of time onto the, the battery results, you, you can go onto our website. The, um, this study is, uh, is fully uh, available and um, uh, accessible to anybody. So feel, feel free to, to, to go there and uh, have a look onto the, onto the data themselves. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us. We can, uh, we can answer some of your questions or advise you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you so much, Ludovic. Um, we will take some time for questions now. Uh, yep. Okay, so let's have a look. Wow, it seems we received many questions. Um, okay, Ludovic, first question. Uh, what is the ability to post-process Ellipse 2D data? So it's possible to post-process Ellipse 2D data. Uh, for that, you have to make sure that you are logging um, the raw uh, I IMU data plus also all the raw GNSS uh, data. Uh, the product has not been designed for that originally, so there is no data logger into it. Uh, it's not so easy, so you have to work, the people have to organize uh, the logging of the data itself. But it's uh, fully possible uh, to do that into Kinersia. Okay, okay, thanks, Ludovic. Um, we have a second question. Uh, what are your thoughts about surveying with PPP? Um, PPP surveying and mainly PPP corrections are, are good for uh, offshore uh, survey. Um, so that's been as soon as you're a bit far from the coast and you, you may not have any uh, RTK capability. Um, our broadcast or, or um, uh, this kind of things, PPP is, uh, is really the way to go uh, to do offshore survey. Um, and you're going to have a decent uh, uh, and pretty good uh, accuracy uh, for such acquisition. Uh, one of the main points with PPP is there is some convergence time at the beginning when you are doing, uh, because you have to initialize and converge toward a, an accurate position. So that's not going to work as soon as you're going to have some GNSS outages. Uh, because each time you, you you will have outages, you will have to converge again towards an accurate solution, and this can take from 20 to 20 minutes to 30 minutes. So that's going to be too long for survey. So PPP, yes, especially uh, uh, offshore. Um, as soon as you are onshore, I would say, or more on coastal survey, uh, we will recommend uh, RTK. Note also that um, we can do PPP post-processing into Kinersia afterwards. 
Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot, Ludovic, for your answer. Yep. Um, so now for the for the last part of our webinar, uh, I will let Raphael introduce you Kinercia, our post-processing software. Uh, but before that, uh, we will have our second poll question. Um, so we are interested to know uh, what you think about post-processing. The question is, for you, post-processing is efficient and easy, complicated and time-consuming, mandatory for high-quality survey, or not necessary, real-time is, is enough. So this is a multiple uh, choice question, so you can choose up to two answers. Uh, the question is on your screen, and I'll let you a few seconds to, to answer it. Okay, so I can see that the votes the vote are in process. I give you still a few more seconds and then I will stop. Okay. Okay, so let's see the results. Okay, so We'll, we'll say that for most of the people, uh, post-processing is complicating, complicated and time-consuming, but you, you think also it's mandatory for a high-quality survey. Um, wh what do you think of this result, uh, Raphael? Well, thank you, Naomi, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of people, when I'm talking uh, to you uh, on exhibition, I think that post-processing is a complicated and time-consuming stuff, and uh, it's why we have uh, designed Kinersha from the ground up uh, to be able to provide you an efficient and easy-to-use tool. And we'll see in this demonstration that it's uh, quite uh, fast and quite straightforward to uh, post-process uh, data uh, from our, our NAF site units or even from any uh, third-party IMU or INS uh, manufacturer. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go through the agenda. So first, I will try to very briefly explain you what is post-processing and, and why it's very helpful. I will then show you a full uh, workflow from acquisition to processing. Uh, we will also look at quality assessment. It's something very important for the post-processing and also to make sure and provide to your customers uh, some uh, assurance that the mission and the processing and uh, all the maps you create are correct. We will also have a look at how we can export the data and uh, integrate this data uh, very easily into third-party softwares. And we will have also a very quick overview of uh, third-party IMU, GNSS uh, and INS support. Uh, the idea is that Kinosha has been also designed to be uh, all-in-one solution uh, that can address any uh, needs you have regarding Genesis processing or INS processing. So with post-processing, the idea is to, uh, it's the easiest way, in fact, to access uh, centimetric positions uh, because in real time you have some uh, quite complicated setup. Most of the time you need either a radio link to get uh, real-time uh, differential corrections to get a RTK uh, position or you can have subscriptions to PPP services, but uh, you know, sometimes the uh, accessibility and even the pricing are, are quite high. So it's not very, uh, in some case, uh, easy to access a uh, centimetric position. And with post-processing, we have a lot of different uh, options uh, to be able to provide you a centimetric position. It's also the only way to access the full accuracy of a specific setup, I mean specific IMU and specific GNSS. So at the same, let's say, uh, price point, uh, with post-processing, you will get much better results and we will uh, have a look at it. It's also the only way uh, to uh, provide data that could be used to survey in harsh conditions if you have multipath, a lot of multipaths and bridges, as Ludovic explained, it's the only way, in fact, uh, it's using post processing. And something very important for me is also uh, quality control. Uh, with post processing, we can provide a lot of different uh, information, figures, uh, histograms, and a lot of uh, data that could help you assess uh, the quality of, of the processing. 
And also uh, something less common is uh, very helpful to use a tool such as Kinasha uh, to do initial installation. So when you have a new INS, you install it on your boat, uh, it could be complicated to accurately measure the lever arms and make sure that everything is correctly set up. You haven't, um, for instance, uh, mis-set up the alignment of the INS and all the stuff. And thanks to Kinasha, it's very helpful to uh, evaluate, check, uh, troubleshoot all the stuff and also use Kinasha to uh, estimate very accurately the main lever arms as well as the dual antenna alignment setup. So it's a very interesting tool. And we have uh, also seen a lot of our customers using Kinasha just to save your day because you've done a six hour mission and uh, don't, you don't have any chance. You have a few uh, gaps because of radio link uh, issues with your ATK. And with Kinasha, uh, you can save the whole mission. So it's a lot, uh, lot of time saved. And most of the time, as I said, it's a very uh, cost-effective solution. It's uh, most of the time much better to use post-processing uh, rather than uh, having to uh, use a much, much higher grade IMU that costs a lot of uh, money. So let's go to the demonstration, Kinasha demonstration. So I will just uh, fire up Kinasha. Uh, and I will create uh, a project uh, for uh, NAF site unit. Uh, so let's go to my data I have here. So it's there's three files have been directly downloaded from the NAF site data logger. And here I have all the settings of the NAF site unit. And here I have binary files containing all the IMU, the RoGNS data, and all the stuff. And I will just drag and drop the files. And automatically, the tool has detected uh, the files and detected that, that it's a marine application. And let's uh, go to the next panel. So I, in fact, I will mainly just review uh, the data and not change the configuration at all because it was uh, correct in the uh, uh, in NAF site unit. So now I have a, a trajectory preview. I can see all the data overlaps and I can also make sure I don't, I don't have any gap, for instance. And let's go ahead. And now I will uh, check and handle all base station stuff. And as you have seen, in, in fact, everything is done in the background. So because I'm talking aloud, we are downloading the base station in the background and all this stuff. So it's why everything is already up to date. So we can see that we have some base station here, but it's quite far from my trajectory. And in this specific situation, we have used a virtual base station. So it's here. I would like for the demonstration to show how easy it is to just get a virtual base station and import it. So it's a Relax file. I just drag and drop. The base station has been detected. Base station has been imported directly. And I can also uh, review some stuff on the base station, such as I can uh, compute the PPP position on it. And in this case, we just set up the correct datum for the base station and launch a PPP computation just to make sure that the base station is correctly located. And I see that it's quite consistent with the published position. I have uh, just five centimeters of uh, drift be between uh, my PPP check and the published position. And let's go ahead and out. Oh, yeah, I have uh, in this base station on purpose, I have a sort of uh, coverage issue. As you can see here, my base station is not covering all my recordings. So I can just very easily adjust what I would like to do. And in this case, I will also take the opportunity to, to maybe remove uh, the beginning of the log because we were docked here and it's not of use. So I will remove a part of the log and that's it. OK, I have cropped my log and go ahead. So now, it's an horizon that has been selected automatically. Everything is, uh, the whole alignment has been read from the unit itself, all the lever arms. So here we see that we have this antenna, we have uh, the main and secondary lever arms that has, have been directly read from the unit. And just uh, go ahead and uh, start looking at the data. So now we are looking at the real-time data out of the unit. So in yellow, you see, in fact, uh, the GNSS, uh, the real-time GNSS solution, that is uh, ATK uh, solution, uh, unless you have some OTGs and uh, multipath effects, such as you can see here. And we can uh, assess very accurately the uh, real-time solution, for instance. So now I'm playing 
uh, the real-time solution and you see uh, here the INS trajectory with uh, the air quality indicated using a green to red color code and you see the genesis itself that is completely uh, going crazy because of all the multipath due to the metallic bridges. So yeah, it gives you some example of how easy it is to access and assess quality. We can uh, very easily check the accuracy and everything on the genesis as well. So let's directly start uh, processing. So we, you can see here I have all my settings. I can tune them if needed, but I don't need uh, in this case. Just launch the tightly coupled solution. So now we are starting the processing here. It's a pre-processing and you will see that we will do at the same time a forward computation here as well as a backward computation here and then we will merge both computations uh, to get the best results uh, in all the cases. So in fact the idea is that when we do a forward computation the quality will be very nice when we enter the bridge but it will be uh, the worst accuracy will be at the exit of the bridge because we will drift during the whole bridge. But in the backward direction, it will be the exact opposite. It will be nice at this area and worse here. And thanks to the backward, forward and merge solution, in fact, we will get a very accurate result here, very accurate here. And in fact, it will be in the middle of the bridge that we will get the least, the least accurate position. So the processing is done. It was a one hour log. As you can see, it took us uh, less than one minute to, to do a full tightly coupled INS solution. So it's a very, very fast processing. It's because we use a very uh, modern architecture with uh, multi-core support and all this stuff. And now we can just uh, review the quality of the processing and, and check some data. So we can see here that we have some pure inertial data, it's mainly uh, under the bridges and I can switch the display here to check the position type and I can see here that I have RTK fix, RTK float, inertial only, RTK float, RTK fix solution because uh, under the bridge of course we just rely on the IMU data and here we can have some nice uh, quality assessment so in this case it's uh, the horizon unit and you see that uh, we have uh, both in terms of estimated accuracy as well as in terms of separation, a very, very accurate role pitch, uh, heading information, the same for the position. And I can even uh, pick up a specific area. So I can do it here, for instance, or I can do it directly in, the, in, this, in this part. I can pick up some area and say, okay, I would like to analyze just this area, define as analysis, and I can check on this area only uh, the estimated accuracy, the separation. So the separation is the disk frequency between the forward computation and the backward computation. And we see that in this area, uh, we have a very, very uh, accurate uh, result. We also have a lot of different uh, tools to help uh, assess the quality, such as a lot of curves. We can check the gyroscope bias, we can check uh, we can check the genesis data in real time. We can have the chip, the chip motion data, the surge heaps, sway, all this stuff. Uh, we can, uh, of course, check the altitude as well. So as you can see, we have a lot of different uh, tools and curves. Uh, we can stack the curve, so it's very convenient. And we can also look uh, at the real time data side by side, by side and do some uh, side by side comparison, such as in this area. I can play the data and you will see that uh, I have uh, here the post-processed uh, on the left uh, and the real-time solution on the right. And we see uh, that the post-processed solution is much more accurate. Uh, we are using the same color code convention and you see clearly the benefit uh, from uh, the post-processing. And here I can check the gyroscope bias and and see that the gyroscope bias are super stable and super accurate. Uh, 0.02 degrees per hour of bias, it's a uh, very, uh, very nice uh, fog I of this one. The final step will be uh, exporting the data. So it's quite convenient, file, export, and we can create as much profile, export profile that we would like and uh, do a lot of stuff such as uh, export on uh, time-based export, epoch-based, uh, event-based. It's used uh, if you have some uh, LiDAR cameras and all this stuff sometimes. 
I can say, okay, I would like only ATK fixed uh, solution or PPP fixed solution. And I can create my own uh, text file format uh, just by drag and dropping some uh, tags and like, setting up uh, everything on each field. So it's a very, very convenient and straightforward. And then I will export the data and that's it. I open the exported data and here we go. We have all the, the data we, we wanted to export. Uh, finally, we can also uh, do some uh, GNSS only computation, such as this one. I will just fire up a GNSS only computation. So we will not uh, use the IMU data, but just do the GNSS computation. As you can see, uh, because it's a GNSS only, we will have some uh, holes here. But we see that we have improved a lot uh, the ATK availability. In this area, we don't have ATK for the real time GNSS, but here we have the ATK fixed. Here, so we improve a lot also the uh, a, a real-time GNSS receiver. It's the case here, you can see as well. And uh, last option also is to do PPP computation, either GNSS only or uh, for the uh, INS post-process PPP. So now, just very quickly, I will also show you a third-party IMU uh, project. I have I'm running out of time, so I will have to do it very quickly. So the idea for third-party IMUs. We have de defined and uh, we uh, provide publicly uh, either a binary file or a text file, uh, so you can uh, import a, a raw GNSS, um, a raw IMU data, sorry, and the GNSS data. In fact, we support directly building uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers such as Trimble, Septon Trio, uh, Novatel, uh, Ublocks, uh, latest uh, GNSS receivers. And all of our manufacturers are supported through uh, Rhinex uh, two or three versions. And uh, the idea with third-party IMU support is to uh, provide you this uh, very simple uh, text file that you can uh, uh, create from uh, any uh, tool. And uh, then uh, you provide the lever arms and all the stuff. So with Kinasha, it's very straightforward. You just have to drag and drop the file we check all the data we have uh, been able to read. And then uh, let's go ahead. It's quite the same workflow as uh, the one uh, we have with our, our units. And in this case, it's logged in Japan with uh, MEMS IMU from Northrop Grumman. And everything is read from uh, the file, as you can see, the alignment, uh, the lever arms and all the stuff. So very, very easy. And I can fire up quite quickly uh, computation on it. So in this case, I, I don't have uh, real time uh, ATK data, it's just as bad. So it's why everything is in red because I just uh, triggered a loosely coupled solution. So I will not recompute the Genesis data uh, in a tightly coupled manner, but just use the Genesis PVT data and do the computation. So that's it, I, I have to hurry up because the time is is running. Uh, so what we have seen is that uh, uh, Kudasha is a very easy and straightforward tool uh, to do post-processing jobs uh, with cutting edge tightly coupled algorithm. So it's uh, really the, the most important point. Uh, it's in-house tightly coupled INS and GNSS algorithm that are running in Kinasha and delivering amazing results. Uh, we also provide GNSS only ATK PPP so you can do any type of jobs you would like to do. Uh, the lever arm calibration module didn't have any, enough time to showcase it, but it's a very nice tool to uh, assess uh, the lever arm's uh, quality you measurement. A lot of quality assessment tools, third body IMU support. So thanks to one tool, you can uh, do all your jobs. You don't have to pay for different tools and formation and, uh, and training and the rest of this type of stuff. And finally, uh, we have a very powerful export uh, system. So you can directly export in SBED files if you are used to this type of files and uh, integrate the data in any type of uh, software such as uh, HiPack, uh, Chimera, uh, and all, uh, all this type of uh, software. So thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free. And I will give the hand back to uh, Noemi. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rafael. Okay, so let's see quickly if we've got some questions related to Kinarchia or post-processing post in general. Uh, question number one. 
uh, what do you recommend for surveys in poor in poor base station coverage? So it depends if you are in a remote location with no base stations at all. In this case, the PPP will be the way to go. Uh, as I said, we have PPP either uh, with our uh, product, real-time product, uh, with the Marine Star uh, subscription, or with Kinersha, we have a free PPP module. Uh, the only uh, limitation is that you have to wait for 24 hours before you can do the computation. But on the other hand, you don't have to pay anything and you will access uh, centimeter level accuracy worldwide with this uh, PPP solution. Uh, the other solution could be to use uh, what we call virtual base station. So we have been working for the past three years on a uh, virtual base station algorithm. And uh, we are very proud to introduce a virtual base station this year with uh, the ability to use either a permanent network base station and also uh, your own base stations to create a virtual base station network around the trajectory and be able to access a short baseline ATK accuracy anywhere in your trajectory. So it's for me the two uh, best options if you don't have a base station nearby. Okay, thanks Raphael. Uh, I have a second question for you. Um, how do you integrate the PPK data into third-party survey software, uh, for example, IPAC or Quincy? Um, uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, a very easy to use uh, exporter. You can either use SBET uh, because a lot of uh, third-party software support it, or you can also use uh, any ASCII text file that you can create and we are already in touch with all these uh, manufacturers, uh, software manufacturers, uh, to even uh, define and ease this workflow. But in fact, uh, most of the time, it's just one file uh, with all the position, velocity, attitude, and another file with all the delayed heave information that you have to import. And uh, thanks to Kinasha uh, export profiles, just uh, create once the profiles, and then uh, you just have to export for all your missions, the same uh, profiles, and it's very, very convenient and uh, straight uh, workflow. Okay, thanks a lot, Raphael. Um, well, uh, we have received, in fact, many questions today, and unfortunately, we don't have the time to answer all of them now, but we will definitely come back to you soon by email to answer all the questions you've asked today or during the registration process. Um, our webinar is now coming to an end. The whole SBG team would like to thank everyone. We really appreciate you being here today. We hope you enjoy this webinar as much as we enjoyed preparing it. And for your information, uh, you will receive tomorrow the recording of this session. Uh, please find now on the screen our contact details if you wish to contact someone from our team. Uh, you will also find our very wide distributor network on our website. And at the end of this session, uh, a short survey should appear uh, on your screen to know if you'd like to, to be contacted uh, by your SBG representative in the coming days. Thanks again for joining us today. Stay safe, take care, and talk to you soon. Bye.